It's the place where senior living insights and entertainment collide, like two star-crossed lovers meeting at a polka dance. This is the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast, hosted by Jeff Bell of Bell PR and Marketing. Senior Living Marketers, put your hands together for the host with the most. Okay, maybe not, but he tries. Jeff Bell. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the intro. I am uh, indeed the host with the most, at least uh, in the opinion of somebody out there. Uh, maybe not even my own, but uh, we'll see how this goes. Welcome to the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast. We are excited about this. Brought to you by Bell PR and Marketing. I'm Jeff Bell. I am the uh, founder and uh, CEO and Jeff of all trades, as they say, of Bell PR and Marketing. We are a full service senior living marketing agency. And this is the inaugural episode, uh, the pilot, if you want to call it that, of the Bellwether PR uh, Insights uh, or Bellwether uh, Senior Living Insights podcast. And I'm really excited to sort of dive in today with our guest. We're going to have, uh, gosh, just a whole bunch of different guests and cover all aspects of senior living as the year goes on. But uh, this guest today, I'm really, really excited about. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, talking about our stuff. I will just uh, tell you, you can find us at www.bellpr.org. If you're watching this on video, click the subscribe button. And if you're listening uh, on uh, on whatever your favorite podcast provider is, make sure you subscribe to us there too. Uh, you won't want to miss what we're doing. And again, we want to have some fun with this. We want to hit uh, Senior Living Insights hard uh, and really talk about the things that are happening in the industry, everything from trends to staffing issues to what does the world look like after COVID, uh, all the way up to uh, uh, technology and 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 you know maybe the lighter side of things, what residents are up to, what uh, what your team's up to. So, uh, with that said, we're going to dive in and uh, talk to our guest today, who I am uh, really really excited to bring in. And he is uh, in the process of coming on screen now. Our guest is James Lee. He is the co-founder and CEO of Bella Groves. And uh, they're located in Valverde, Texas. And I love, love the tagline, unconditional joy. Uh, this was uh, James and I um, have connected over the years, both being senior living professionals, sort of off and on, but we never really had a chance to uh, get to know each other really well. We've been doing that lately. And uh, I was so uh, inspired by what I see from James on uh, social media, the passion that he has for the industry and, the, and Bella Groves, James specifies specifically in dementia care. And I'm, I'm going to let you sort of tell us in your own words a little bit more, but um, I will just say that the reason we've got you on as a guest today is because I am, am personally very excited about what you're doing. I think it's got uh, industry changing implications. And so with that said, tell us about Bella Groves and how this whole vision got started. Absolutely. And and thanks for having me uh, here on your show, Jeff. Um, I... You know, Be Bella Groves is, um, it's easier to say that it's an education company. Um, we happen to do it in an assisted living setting at the moment. There are other ways that we're going to, um, you know, share that education product, if you will, with with the greater market. Uh, but Bella Groves in its, uh, in its, you know, truest sense is an education company. And specifically, we're talking about dementia education. So the uh, problem that I've seen in, in the you know, uh, 14, 15 years I've been in the industry is that by the time we see people enter the senior living landscape um, who are affected by dementia, it is almost certainly at the end of their journey. Um, it's never at the beginning, sometimes in the middle, uh, but if it is in the middle, then you're probably, you know, in the independent or assisted living landscape. Um, and you know, the, the fact that dementia right now uh, is something that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, it's it's treated the same way that maybe cancer was, you know, 40 years ago. Uh, dementia is that new kind of 
secret shame that families don't want to talk about. And even when they receive support and care for it, it's not under that name. It's it's hidden uh, as, as a motive behind something else. And so um, what I, I, I really had this epiphany while I was uh, an executive director of a assisted living in memory care community that, gosh, every single family that I'm working with right now, the one commonality that they have is I felt like they could have spared themselves pain, heartache, and been just more successful had they known a little bit more about what we do here, the care approach of what we do here. And so that started this whole journey of, uh, you know, what could we do besides just build more assisted living places and put people in them? Um, And the answer to me is education, helping people understand uh, about the dementia journey, uh, what is dementia? What are some uh, methodology and care approaches that you can take to be successful in that pursuit? So Bella Groves is a membership-based um, service to our local community here in Northern San Antonio. And um, while we haven't launched all three phases of this, what we aim to do is to help people from the very beginning of the journey all the way through the end. So that initial member who's going to join Bella Groves may just join our online learning center where they're going to learn about topics, um, small bite-sized instructional content about um, what is sundowning. How do I help my mom take medication when she says, I don't take that medication? Um, These are simple questions that families have, and there's no simple way for you to go get that information at the moment. Um, As members progress through dementia, they may enter what we call level two or the the middle membership. And there uh, will be kind of the operating system or the playbook, if you will. So um, when you're taking care of your loved one at home, you may still have questions about how do I coordinate all these doctor's appointments? What do I do with all these medications? How do I make sure mom is eating? You know, are there safety modifications I need to make in the house. These are all things that most families deal with that you don't really have that dementia coach to help you through that. So so we want to help um, people be successful in their home. And then the final level of membership for us is what we started with at Bella Grows, which is our um, what I think is a a very kind of game-changing way of approaching dementia care in an assisted living facility. So um, way longer than an elevator pitch there, Jeff. So Hope you've got w- w- editing wizardry to to make that a little more compact. Our our executive producer never <laughs> uh, never fails to impress. So um, take take me back though, because dementia, like you said, it's it's sort of a a hidden word. Um, mm-hmm. We kind of bury it in other terms. Sometimes we say memory care. Sometimes we say other things. But yeah. it's also a loaded word because mm-hmm. dementia doesn't necessarily mean Alzheimer's. I think that's that's the word that sometimes comes to mind. But dementia itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, carries a, a really large spectrum of uh, memory symptoms mm-hmm. and and therefore a totally large spectrum of how we're going to treat this, how we're going to approach this, depending on where we are in the journey. And so, you know, if we're starting at step one, if someone is in that early stage, they've got a loved one who has been diagnosed with some form of cognitive impairment, what um, what can they expect to learn from Bella Groves? And and how do you sort of diagnose where they are in the journey and and, and, and how they fit into the process? Yeah, um, I, I love that question. And the, the, the truth is we, the point of our company existing is that we're exploring that question. So I have a theory, I have a hypothesis that we're certainly testing, um, but I admit I don't have all of the um, answers up front. And I think, by the way, just as a side note, that's what a company should be. All companies should be that. We have a hypothesis and we're testing that, uh, but nobody should just feel like, hey, I've got all the answers and here you go. Um, So let me kind of illustrate my answer by asking you a question first, Jeff. If I told you I have cancer, what's the very next question you're probably going to ask me? Uh, more likely, I'm going to say what kind and or, and, or how yeah. serious. Exactly. Um, and right now, if, if somebody told you, well, Jeff, I've just been diagnosed with dementia, your next question is likely not what type of dementia. Right. And it should be. So that's, you know, first and foremost, that's the first thing that I think 
uh, most people don't really understand is uh, dementia is an umbrella term. Um, Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia, but those two are not separate things. So, you know, that that would be like saying uh, you either have cancer or leukemia. Well, leukemia is a form of cancer, just like Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. Right. So from that simple aha moment, most people can't tell you what I just uh, shared with you. From that simple aha moment, then you start all of these roads of, ah, okay, so I have Alzheimer's disease, which is a form of dementia. What does that mean? What's, what's unique about Alzheimer's disease that is different from the other forms of dementia? And, and something a lot of people don't know either is that uh, many, many people have mixed dementias. So if it wasn't bad news enough about this, you know, this, this doom and gloom of dementia, um, a lot of people experience multiple forms of dementia at once. And so it's this type of nuance that I think people need to understand so they can figure out what do I do with that information? So, um, you know, we're not medical doctors, we're not neurologists, we don't diagnose anybody, but I would say we have enough repetition to be able to kind of take the symptoms, you know, conditions, the things that you're experiencing and have a pretty good clue as to how to get you started. So, um, what we want to do is to, we want to be the lead detective on your case. So when you come work with us, uh, we're going to go right back to the beginning of, okay, what do we know about what type of dementia it is? How far along is that dementia? And then what have you done so far? So, so we can determine what to do from here. Yeah, absolutely. And that makes, uh, it makes total sense. The other thing that's really interesting to me that I kind of want to dive into a little bit I, I had a grandparent that um, ultimately um, succumbed to Alzheimer's disease many years ago. And at that time, uh, the sort of common thing to do was, well, we've got to put grandma in a nursing home. That was mm -hmm. the term that was used. And there really wasn't a lot of thought on how do we help grandpa, who was still cognitively totally fine, mm -hmm. take care of her? Or how could we take care of her? Is it an automatic, we've got to go from diagnosis to, okay, we've got to We've got to take this this massive next step, and a lot of that came from panic, and it came from just not fully understanding um, what we were dealing with. Yeah. So, um, how have things changed, and how unique is your model uh, of getting people at the beginning of of the process and and helping them, sort of empowering them to have information? That is absolutely right. the The right word is empowering, and. You know, what we ultimately hope to be able to do for people who are going to go through this dementia journey is that we want to be their partners while they still retain the full agency of their own decisions, of their own plan, of their own, you know, wishes. And so uh, some of the people we're working with now, uh, one of the best stories I can share with people is that uh, there was a gentleman who came in and he's he's a, a real estate agent here in the local market. And uh, he said, hey, I. I think I may have dementia. And then and then that started our conversation. And in my 15 years of being in the industry, I've never once had somebody approach me and say, I think I may have dementia. Can you yeah. help? And so what a world this would be if we can empower this person while he still has agency of all of the, the desires and wishes um, that he can think through and help him to put that plan together. So some of the things we've talked with this gentleman about is, okay, how do you want to go talk to your doctor? And so we helped him prepare a checklist of questions for his physician. Uh, we helped him kind of think through, how do I approach this conversation with my family if it is, in fact, dementia? What can I do to kind of stave off um, the progression of this dementia if it, in fact, is dementia? So these are all things that people are curious about, but Oftentimes, they don't want to talk to a doctor. They don't want to talk to their friends. They don't want to talk to their kids. And if you go online, it's just a rabbit hole abyss of, I don't even know what questions to ask. Yeah. So what we want to do is organize all of that chaos and give somebody just a, a, um, a safe environment to explore all of these questions without the pressure of, hey, you got to move into our care facility. Yeah, absolutely. And so if someone, um, you know, is, has been going through that process, they're frustrated, maybe, uh, you know, maybe the, uh, the pride has gotten in the way a little bit of, I, I don't mm -hmm. want to talk to a doctor. I don't want to talk to my family. I can do this. I can, I can make it, I can make it through. I don't even know for sure if I've got a diagnosis. And then they eventually reach a point where 
something has happened where, okay, mm-hmm. now, now is the time. I assume they can get in touch with you and sort of find out, okay, I may already be in level two by this point, or, or we, we haven't done some of the things that maybe we should have done because we didn't know, but now we're at a point with mom or dad where we, we've got to have some help. So I would imagine there's sort of a, a diagnostic process there. Of let's, let's figure out where you're at and where we can take you. Yeah, certainly. And we're going to, we're going to lean on medical partners and, you know, the, the people who can actually officially diagnose. Uh, but yeah, in, in a kind of more of a global sense, we're going to be the quarterback there. That's going to help kind of call the plays and say, here's where everybody is and here's what we do next. Um, and so I, I realized I didn't answer your earlier question about, um, you know, is, is, are there intervening steps between, here and moving into a nursing home. And so that is the problem I see in our industry is that for anybody with dementia, you have a A versus B binary decision, which is you're either at home or you're living with us. And we can dress up the setting, the assisted living, the memory care, we can call it something else. But in the minds of those that we're trying to help, they, of course, are trying to hang on to their home, their family, their way of life. Um, and oftentimes, even family members will tell us, man, I'll, I'll bet if there are salespeople listening to this podcast, they'll they'll kind of do an amen here. Um, family members report to us in the sales process, you know, I'm just exploring right now. We won't make the call for memory care until my mom doesn't know who I am anymore. Yeah. That is the equivalent, Jeff, of somebody saying, I know I have cancer, but I'm not going to go see a doctor until it's stage four. Right. Right. Right now, if you have even the possibility of cancer, you're going to talk to your friends, you're going to talk to your family, you're going to talk to your doctors, you're going to put a game plan in place right away. But with dementia, it becomes a shameful thing. Uh, and it's it's based in lack of knowledge, not anything else. I think if people knew more about it, um, they would feel more comfortable talking through it. Um, and, you know, there are people who get diagnosed with cancer that beat it. And I know that there's going to be a time in the near future, uh, in my lifetime, I hope, where somebody gets diagnosed with dementia and they beat it. And I hope I see that day as well, yeah. um, especially with the with the family background. So, so I've got to ask, kind of backing up to yeah. uh, to the beginning of all this. You've had a career in senior living, and um, and 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 I know that you've got some co founders who are part of this venture as well. It's a great idea, um, but I'm sure there are other great ideas you could have pursued. What was it that sort of made you collaboratively come together and say, "This is where we want to leave our mark"? Yeah. Um, I'll tell you that, you know, it's hard for me to speak on my co-founders behalf, although I could probably um, at least do a good job representing, you know, their, their desires. Uh, but, but I can certainly speak to mine. Um, you know, the truth is, Jeff, I think that my, my why is actually not even tied to seniors and it's not tied to dementia. My why is tied to families and specifically family reconciliation. I think that every family goes through, you know, ebbs and flows and journeys of um, deep love and and then sometimes deep um, opposite of love, which is not hate, it's fear, you know, deep fear. And so, oh, that, that sounded very Yoda-like, didn't it? A, a little bit. A, a little, little Yoda, bit. yeah. I, I may have to trademark that. <laughs> a, little, a little Yoda. Um, but anyway, you know, families go through these ebb and flow stories and multiple storylines. And the thing that I've observed about life is that no matter how great or challenged a family is, every single family goes through some form or iterations of reconciliation. And it's it's so apparent in the senior living industry, we get to witness that over and over and over again. You know, yeah. there's something about the death and dying process of which it is a part of senior living that forces people to this kind of reconciliatory kind of moment in life. And so for me, taking care of seniors is actually taking care of families. And so for me, dementia, um, to me, it's it's a proof of concept. Uh, it's kind of a, um, it's a, it's an organized experiment that if we can make this work, and the this, by the way, is a membership 
kind of model, um, senior living beyond the walls. Um, that's really the model that we're testing here. I think that we can do it in the arena of dementia as a microcosm of kind of the bigger picture, which is, can we do this in senior living, in you know, aging services in general? And I believe the answer is yes. We're going to prove it first in dementia care. Um, and then, you know, the goal is let's spread this out and connect all of these people. And by the way, this movement of kind of intergenerational uh, cohabitation, senior living outside the walls, uh, senior living as a service. These are things that are not unique to me or Bella Groves. It's a growing you know, movement, I think, in the industry. Uh, and in particular, it's a response to what we see happening in the market you know, from, from a demographics per perspective. Um, people in their 50s, 60s, 70s now, they don't want to live in our version of assisted living. So you know, we're, we're forced to change, and I'm, and I'm happy for that. Uh, but that long-winded answer, if I could narrow it uh, to something more succinct, I'd say Bella Grows was my all-in because I felt like this is the arena where I can prove this concept that um, the aging process doesn't have to be a here versus there dilemma. It can be a here and there um, solution. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you've also sort of indirectly answered a question, um, at least in part, Mm -hmm. that I think a lot of us in the industry have been asking for a long time. We've been planning for it. And, and there are multiple hypotheses out there. There are multiple answers, I suppose. But the question is, with the baby boomers mm -hmm. and even the generation that's going to be coming behind them, because we're going to blink and it's going to be their time as well, mm -hmm. what is senior living going to look like? Because it's not going to look the same. And I think we all intuitively know that. And yeah. so it's fascinating. And part of the reason that we put this podcast together is to find out what stories are out there like yours, the stories and the people who are going to shape the future of this industry that we all absolutely love. And, and I think, um, why wouldn't it start with the baby boomers? Of course, uh, it, yeah. it's so fitting for that generation and what they've been and who they are and, and, and where they're going and how they're going to meet those challenges of the future. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Millennials are um, sometimes um, given the label of uh, entitled, but man, baby boomers started it. Baby boomers, you know, started the, uh, well, I want a title for every level of the organization. Um, you know, I, I say that lovingly. Um, you know, so I, I obviously don't have a crystal ball. Uh, I lent it out to somebody, so I don't have it anymore. Um, but without that crystal ball, you know, my best guess as to what senior living is going to look like. Um, I, I think it's generally safe for me to say that senior living in the future is a service, not a place. Right now, senior living is a place. You know, if you Google senior living, you're going to go to Google Maps and you're going to see dots on that map. In the future, I hope when you Google senior living, you don't just get a map. You get um, just pages and pages of professionals who have the know-how that have evolved our offering to wherever you are, we can help. We can help you go through, um, or not even go through, we can help you find fulfillment in the aging process beyond kind of the middle stage of your life. Some people call it the third life. Um, I think that that is, it's clearly a huge opportunity. And, you know, right now, when my friends ask me, why are you in the senior living industry? Um, I actually say, well, we're all in the senior living industry. You just don't know it yet. Well, I think this has been an absolutely fascinating conversation. And uh, if you're agreeable in the future, we would love to have you back on the podcast again, continue to learn how Bella Groves is, is, is doing. If people want to learn more, um, obviously, bellagroves.com. But what, what else? Uh, what, what should they know? Yeah. Um, thanks again for having me on. And, you know, this does feel like part one of... 20. I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll just do this once a year, Jeff. Um, <laughs> but bellagroves.com is obviously a great way to do that. Um, you'll find all of our social media uh, handles uh, on the website too. Um, I do a lot of content uh, on LinkedIn, which is where you and I really kind of fostered uh, a friendship. So I think that's a good place to engage with me. Um, but I want to, I want to talk to you. I want to find, I want to work with more people who kind of have the same vibe um, we've got to make a pretty sharp turn in our industry. We can't just slowly iterate. We actually have to make a pretty sharp right turn here. So 
Um, if you're in that process of making that turn, let's talk. Well, I could uh, could not uh, be more thankful that you uh, chose to join uh, this podcast. And we, we we talk about when I put this together, I wanted it to be, uh, you know, one part senior living insights, one part entertainment and then everything else somewhere in between. Yeah. I think this was much more on the insightful uh, side and, and, and perhaps in other conversations will, uh, will, will be a little more, uh, loose and fun, but such important stuff yeah. that, we, that, that we talked about today. And again, I think this, this could be a, you know, to your point, a 20 part series where we really dive into this further. So I hope that, that we can count on you to come back again. And, uh, and, and we will look forward to that for anyone who really enjoyed what they heard today, make sure you subscribe. If you're uh, watching on our YouTube channel, do it that way. And, uh, you can find us where any of our podcasts are heard. And so with that, we're going to, uh, say thank you and, uh, sign off for now. So for executive producer, Julie Montoya Houston, I'm Jeff Bell, founder and CEO of Bell PR and marketing. And you have been listening to the Bellwether Senior Living Insights podcast. I'm gonna go get